Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we actually have Wokes on the Selene, a common character that's been being seen a lot in ERCS recently. Today we've got Amir with us. Amir, how are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Getting to see Wokes play something other than Nathapon is, uh, is always a treat. As I know, he went from playing almost, I think, only Nathapon last season to now picking up Selene on the main account, which has been performing really well. Yeah, and I mean, I, kn I know what you mean about definitely like like seeing Wokes on some different characters, but I will say I'm a little sad to not see the Nathapon as much anymore as I always enjoyed watching those F-stop plays and full combos. But Selene is a crazy character. Like I mentioned, I mean, we've been seeing her a lot more right now in tournament play. And Wokes is probably one of the uh, best in NA right now for Selene players. And it's kind of crazy what this character can do when in the right hands. Yeah, Selene goes from being a character that, that starts chucking bombs around to a character that is a walking nuke when uh, when the player understands what she's able to do. And I think Wokes is one of the prime examples of turning this character into a walking nuke because I, I've seen fights where it feels like the fight has just started, but Wokes puts two people on the floor instantly. Yeah, and one of the things that's also really interesting about this too is that Selene is a character that it has a deceptive range. She's actually a really short ranged mage. She doesn't have a lot of reach to hit a target, but her her range seems much longer when you're trying to engage onto her. So a lot of teams that try to push into a Selene end up falling into her mines and getting blown up instantly and taking a ton of damage. But a Selene trying to chase is a lot harder to do because her range does not normally reach out to a lot of people that are actually creating space away from her. Yeah, unlike some regular carries like auto attackers they selene has to throw out her damage which means that the time for her to throw it out and then also sorry we have a bit of a fight where wokes almost falls on the floor we're actually really lucky our aya comes over because i think the second that this isaac gets on us we just don't have the damage this early to actually deal with him but hopefully some items can change that um, yeah, and especially because Wokes had to instantly burn his um his grenade like blast wave to send himself away from the Isaac, and Isaac's easily easily was able to just scrape back on top of him. So yeah, the low cooldowns early on were uh, were not the best, but we had our teammate right there, so very very clean, and we didn't even go down, which is really nice. Yeah, I also know because uh, a bit of last season, I decided to try and pick up Celine. Uh, sadly, got nowhere as good as Wokes, but. I did some VOD reviews of some other players, such as I think One Circle was playing a bit of her last season as well. Um, Celine is a character that usually rushes Persona, which for a lot of people, at least back then, was a bit of a weird topic to do, where skipping tax skill and going tax skill one, especially on Blink, it was somewhat troll, um, but I think a lot more people have been a bit more accepting of it now where on characters such as Selene where you need your character is basically just a damage bot um you need to be throwing out all of this damage you need to make sure that you're prioritizing the items that can provide you the most damage and for Selene persona is a must-have for sure and it's actually you I mean you can already see it here uh, Wokes is prepping it like he doesn't have blink leveled up he already has the persona craft because you know he went up into temple already got his craft ready to go so as soon as that day shift happens, he should be pretty much good. He's at 280 credits, so going to be pretty pretty close as soon as the day shifts. Yeah, I think another thing as well with Selene is the chest options for Selene feels, at least to me, very weird. As I know, a lot of Selene's go Blood Cloak right now. Um, and I think a lot of it is just because she has the option to press R and then drop a bomb and blow it up on someone, as we see right here. Um, but also, we see maybe Wokes throwing the possible 4 bomb. Oh my god! See, watching Wokes do something like that, where we're throwing bombs, we're just waiting, prepping, put the 4 bomb together, and then push someone into it with our E, it, it makes me think that this character can do so much more than she's currently doing. Yeah, it's exactly that kind of play that, that really sets the difference. Because again, remember, people have to walk into you a lot of times due to your short range. But because of that, like, I mean, Wokes just like sets up the enemy to go into it. And at this point, he's already got it. He's got his mind ready. 
and just takes down the Vanya like it was pretty much nothing uh, yeah. there. But yeah, it going back to that Blood Coke discussion, Blood Coke, I mean, I can definitely see its value in the sense that, you know, every time that Selene hits you with a bomb, it's definitely going to start taking some damage down. But I think I understand what you're trying to say where the fight might be just going a little too quickly where like Selene just sends out 15 bombs, gets the four bomb, instantly blows up half your HP. And then like the fight's kind of decided at that point and debilitation's procced for three seconds, maybe. Yeah, I think one of the main reasons blood cloak is is an okay or at least in my eyes is a good pick for her is just denying the the ability for your opponents to rest um just having the extra tick to make sure that they can't rest but i'd like to see maybe some some other options i'm not sure exactly what i'd be throwing in on selene because i know that she is not the greatest user of cdr um, uh, okay, so if I if I had to think about this here and I was going to go into a different chess piece, it'd probably be Holy Order's chess piece, and then you probably would end up running your the Mithril head piece that does the extra damage on the first hit, and then after four seconds, if it gets uh, hit again. Black Death. Yeah, yeah, Black Death. I feel like that would be the best option, as that's very commonly seen on a lot of mages that like to play a bit faster and get that like last hit burst damage. Um, I mean, that does sound like a good combination. I'm not exactly sure why Celine specifically picked to go uh, Persona either, because the choice between Persona and Holy Orders, to me at least, is always just what slot can you uh, what slot can you give up a bit easier. Also, we're going to see Wokes just throw insane amounts of bombs down. We're putting up another four bomb together, unable to actually kill though. We put them at such low HP that our eye is just able to clean it up for us. But we do still have another fight to take right after this. Yeah, and I mean, again, it's just the team tries to like dive in. Wokes creates that great space, sets them up into the mines, and he just gets triple four bombs back to back. Even in a defense zone. This, remember, this is a defense zone, so they're even more tanky than normal. And he was he's still shredding people in this in this battle zone. Yeah, like I love seeing uh Celine's have I think like this was very early on they stopped taking things such as the uh the red sprite and switched to taking frailty because selene is a very very fast combo character at the end of the day she likes to throw a bunch of bombs on someone hit them with like three or four of them she procs the frailty with that and then throws the four bomb down onto them and then pops a four bomb while they're death shred like she'll just be doing infinite damage she also takes stopping power if you get a really fast combo off you're ignoring, I want to say, like, maybe upwards to 15% of your opponent's armor, which can be a lot of damage. Absolutely. You know, now, now that we had that discussion about, like, different, like, headpieces that you'd put on because you'd be, like, swapping out the chest piece, I'm thinking, like, why are we not on, like, Dragon's Fury? And, I mean, I'm sure there's answers behind this that someone's already figured out. But, like, the initial thought of, like, four bombing yeah. immediately Dragon's Fury into uh, the, the fourth hit, like, doing a massive explosion, just sounds so good in my brain. <laughs> I mean, I might have to run the numbers after this one, but I, I would hope that this is a, a something that a Selene main has thought through and not just we like the funny item. Yeah, like I mean, between the the myth headpiece, I mean the main the main factor that I would consider on that one is that sometimes you don't actually have the dis like the range to hit that second hit or that another hit after four seconds, so sometimes it's just kind of useless and would never proc. But I mean, I don't know. The dragon's fury sounds like it would kind of kind of cook extra, but then you have CDR on head, so maybe that's why they try to avoid that. That would make sense as well, but I think my or at least. Like, my preferred slots are looking like uh, usually uh, the forgotten item of Kabana uh, in the chest slot, because I think Kabana is just... I think it's still really good. It gives you a decent amount of amp. It gives you heal cut. It means that you're not locked into getting uh, myth boots, or sorry, <laughs> legs of steel early. But then we always run into the issue of amp characters realistically only have two damage boots to transition into. One being CDR and the other being damage with heal cut. So heal cut amp items usually get thrown under the bus because you are somewhat locked into running 
heel cut boots. Yeah, exactly. Heel cut boots are just the best statted unless you go your Iron Maidens, which could work with a build like this because we do run uh, Frailty. So, you know, extra pen inherently would equate to basically the same amount of damage. But since we're running an item like Persona, more amp, the better. Yeah, but I also love seeing Wokes's. Whoa, my God, the amount of damage coming out. We're able to put the Haze to half health with the four bomb basically alone. And yeah, right before that, I was about to say, I love seeing Wokes's use of E trying to put opponents like back into his team and manipulate where they are but after that we just blinked forward looked for a four bomb combo right on top of three people that was that was so much faster than i could process yeah and i mean it's it's a it's a crazy risky play like that that really gets rewarded in in lobbies like this because if you think about it in reality when wokes did that blink in he didn't have his e and he blinked in front of a haze lee dial in if they were ready for it, they could have definitely turned that. But because they weren't ready and Wokes sent out so much damage so quickly, even if they registered and tried to make that turn and Wokes went down, Wokes had already gotten them to solo HP that it was going to be the freest cleanup for his team, regardless of that play after. Yeah, I think making plays like this are usually what make you a somewhat recognizable player. I think as Wokes was previously known for the Nathapon, he was making similar plays like this, and switching to the Selene didn't stop. Just had to learn the Selene to make sure that it was, uh, it was up to par with the Nathapon, so that he can be known for the Selene as well. Running on those two characters. Also, there's one... I'm going to go back to the headpiece for one more time. I apologize. Oh, We're yeah, not no, going to talk it's... about headpieces <laughs> after this, I swear. But yep. the other thing that I always forget to bring up that is really important and why Persona is probably being prioed over anything else is the 0 0.1 movement speed it may seem it small but that lot. matters uh, with zero point for a lot of people that don't realize it 0 0.1 movement speed should be around i think a four of upgraded boots uh, i think most upgraded boots are i, I wanted to say 0 0.4 but i actually think that they were i'm pretty sure upgraded boots were nerfed a while ago yeah they yeah 0 0.25 yeah, 0 0.25 so this slot is like what uh like just under a half like um i i can't run the numbers in my head right yeah, now it's, it's like basically half a shoe there. okay we're putting on half a shoe on the headpiece which is really important on a character like celine that is really reliant on just her blast wave and her blink to be able to get mobility going yeah i think as Celine, one of the biggest issues that you'll usually have is either you can't chase someone um, because you're a bit too slow, which is why we're also running the Scotty to help that, or we're being chased and we can't escape someone because for you to throw damage back at someone, you have to stand still to be able to throw the animation for your bomb, which a lot of the time, if you are running away from someone that is too close, it, w it will just get you on the floor. You'll end up dying. Um, so being able to just get the bonus movement speed, cover a bit more distance, and then start using your abilities really helps. For sure. And actually, one of the things we should have probably maybe mentioned a little bit early on for anyone that doesn't really normally play Selene, uh, one of the actually most interesting things to pick up and think about when you play a character like Selene is between her, her Q and W, there are actually two buttons that do not share like a global cooldown with. They have no buffer between each other. So a, a very common thing, and the reason how you can see some Selene players spam incredibly fast is they'll actually just have both uh, two fingers on both buttons and they will just press both buttons at the exact same time and spam it downwards, which allows both to go off instantly. Yeah, and I think Selene players that are able to get this off right, sorry, as we see a fight coming together again, I swear, Wokes always uses E to try and disrupt his opponent's movement, and it just makes my it just makes my brain go go ooh every time. It's so nice because the amount of players that use this ability primarily for their own movement instead of trying to affect their opponents and make them misplay is a few too many, and it just it's nice to see a change. Well, it's a it's a difference in in confidence in your in your spacing and zoning as a, as a character. I mean, Wokes is really confident in, in his character to be able to make sure that he's actually always in the right place so that he doesn't get jumped on by enemies. And if he does, he's making sure that they're getting punished for it. But uh, one thing else that was really interesting, right before we saw that fight, he built up all those five bombs and he threw his E right before he fought this into that bush. 
Yeah, and oh my god. I think one thing is we just keep building up all of these bombs to like honestly kind of for fun, but it also just helps us take fights in the future. Um I think a lot of people don't value just pressing your R because it does put down a bomb down or it does put a pretty large range bomb down that you can still pop for things like your blood cloak passive and your Scotty passive and it still does damage so like don't underestimate uh, underestimate just putting the R down and also don't underestimate using E just to clear vision a lot of Selene's I know use Q for your vision because I am pretty sure you don't get vision from throwing the E but you do get vision from throwing the Q. Yeah, and actually, but I'm pretty sure it's commonly to use R. R is also a really good vision uh, check. Yeah. Kind of forgot about using R for vision, as I did talk about randomly throwing R out earlier. But also, we're going to see, I think... Yeah, we're just blinking forward. We really want to take this fight. But the amount of healing that came from that Luke, that is... I know we... I don't think we triggered any heal cut on him, but I'm pretty sure Luke just healed a thousand health from pressing W on three people. Yeah, that healing is crazy. And again, yeah, this is just such aggressive plays from Wokes. He's not afraid about his position. He knows his limits. He's just going to constantly, you know, use his, use his uh, Blast Wave to send people away. He's going to use his Blink to go forward. He's just constantly trying to get uh, catch people and take take that fight and instantly turn it into a 2v3 for them. Yeah, like, Wokes just positioning so far up here, knowing that there's three people placing the camera down and just placing bombs right in front, making sure that they can't just engage for free. And if they do engage, they have to deal with Wokes slowing them and then probably throwing a four bomb right on top right after. Actually, I think this is a prime example of a play style of playing for your, like playing to like try and capitalize on winning fights for your team without relying on your team. Wokes is 100% trying to take any and every opportunity that he can to make sure that he can help guarantee a win for his team. Yeah, playing so far up, making sure that we're always putting our opponents low enough that no matter what happens, our team will be able to clean up, no matter how sometimes bad we might misplay, it'll always be recoverable because Wokes has just made it so easy for us to play. Yeah, this is actually Wick team, and I mean, Wokes are here. Look, he's just covering up the chokes. Like they, The Wick team is scared to push into this. Uh, let me just move this off a bit. Like, they're actually terrified to come into this this choke. That you can't walk into here. It's actually terrifying. And at that point, Wick team actually has to back off from his team. Yeah, we're stuck in a corner as Celine, and instead of just, like, giving them the space or throwing cues, trying to hit damage, we're making sure that they just can't push us, knowing that... Even if we want to take the fight here, it's just very hard to take fights with a team that has Wick currently, as we do actually see them splitting up. I wonder if we'll look for the fight while they're not together. It looks like Wokes is kind of looking. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah, if he sends like an E somewhere to send someone into a bomb. <laughs> yeah, watching Wokes just randomly throw E forward, like a lot of players might say it's grief. Oh, we do we see the, uh, the mark? Is he? Oh my god. God, the, the amount damage. of damage coming out. It, it just feels like he's able to do so much throwing four bombs and then throw it, hitting the ult and putting it together into blowing up. It did, I think, 800 damage. We're also going to see... I, <laughs> I think Hyunwoo blinked forward just to press ult on uh, onto our eye. Uh? I don't know what else he did there, but I mean, it, it did put eye at a very low HP. Yeah, I mean, but a little I'm... unfortunate, though, that, that they got that res back up. But, I mean, again, you just don't want to push into Selene. The second they overextend onto her, wow, the damage that she can pull out is crazy. And that's one of the things that makes Selene really strong. Because, you know, we talked about her weaknesses early, where, like, she doesn't normally have the range to chase. But if you have anyone play into you, or you force them to play into your bombs, Selene is, I think, has to be, the, like, one of the highest burst mage characters in the entire game. Yeah, Selene having a lot of damage in kit, everything being her QW being put together, just damage, 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 and then ulting to put all of your bombs together, combining the damage and just throwing it up in a bomb right after. It, like, personally, I just want, I don't want to have to fight that. So, 
I can understand other people, especially when you have to fight Wokes playing it. I can't imagine they want to fight it either. No, for sure, because it is never a good case in any situation like that, especially when you have a Selene that is confident in their spacing and not being caught out from most cases without even relying on their toolkits that they normally would use. Because again, you know, as we go over and we cover Wokes' gameplay and you know, we're seeing Wokes capitalize on blinking forward and eating people into his bombs or into his team. Sometimes if you're not as confident in your spacing or in your zoning, you need to sometimes save your E to be able to create that extra distance so you don't get caught out and die or blink away so you don't die, right? You need to have save these tools for those opportunities to make sure that you're okay. Yeah, yeah I think... Uh, the ability to, to, as you said, have this confidence to make sure that you're just allowed to walk up the distance that Wokes walks up, as I'm pretty sure we'll probably see him do again, is, as a player, it just feels like Wokes is on another level compared to the rest of this lobby. We're walking up, hitting, hitting people for half their health, and then walking back, seemingly unpunished. And yeah, we're doing the same thing. Oh, we will actually get punished this time as we're being jumped by... <laughs> we're being jumped by everyone. <laughs> I think we might have done enough and had a big, been a big enough threat that our eye is able to put out so much damage, though. And yeah, we're going for the res on Wokes, making sure that we just secure this game. Yeah, but the, I mean, the good, the good example, though, of exactly what we kind of talked about, where, yes, we watched Wokes' entire game get paid off with his aggressive plays, but that can happen too. You know, he's looking for that aggressive play. He gets caught out by a little bit further distance. Thankfully, he did have his blink to blink away. And I think he also was able to use his E defensively as well. So definitely you can play it both ways. You just gotta make sure that you're safe with it. But that will be it for this video, guys. We'll see you in the next one.